So guys, come on in. Welcome to my 2022 house tour. It's been a little over a year since I moved into this house and after so many requests from you guys, I'm going to give you a tour of my house. So grab some popcorn, a drink, then buckle up and let's go for the ride. Starting with the room I spend most of my time in, the living room. So my living room has been morphing from the day I moved in and being a tech and design enthusiast, there's definitely a few more iterations to come. Here's a quick snapshot of how it's evolved since I moved in. Long before I moved into this house, the first thing I did was to sketch how I wanted my TV wall to look like and being so big into tech, I wanted a statement piece in the form of my 85 inch Samsung Q60A. Even though it's an entry level QLED, it sits on the sweet spot between affordability and good quality features and after a year of use, this behemoth has fit the bill perfectly. I've enjoyed watching movies on it over the past year and despite being an entry level QLED, I've been getting those rich deep colors but without the added expense of a full array backlit panel. When it comes to gaming, it's not the best due to lack of all the next gen gaming features like variable refresh rates, 4K at 120Hz but I've still been getting the most out of it with my PlayStation 5. To cap off the TV, I've got Govi RGB light strips to set different moods especially on those movie nights. If you'd like an in-depth look at it, I'll leave a link of the review in the description box. Up next I've got my media console and floating shelves which make the TV area look more visually pleasing. The floating shelves sit on either side and the media console right underneath which I'll be taking you through in just a bit. Starting with the floating shelves, they both have a levitating plant and bulb and these have been the perfect conversation starter when I have guests around. Their gentle infinite rotations evoke a very ethereal calm to the space and I haven't stopped marveling at the wow effect they bring to the setup. In addition to that, the walnut ties in well with the theme of my entire setup. This is where I go back to a saying I told you guys in my desk setup guide, repetition creates rhythm. If you haven't watched it, I'll link it up there. Moving further down, underneath the TV I've got this media console which I bought from eBay and it's held up so well. It's made out of medium density fiber board and spans about 240 centimeters, which perfectly accommodates the size of my TV. On top of it I've got my Samsung HWQ950T Series 9 soundbar that has a 9.1.2 channel. Next to the soundbar I have my Wi-Fi router, PS5 controllers and a charging dock and my PS5 Digital Edition console. To the left I have this terrarium that brings nature to the media console through some greenery and it's got a bunch of plants in it. The second compartment has a few full plants which I bought from a local shop. Inside the drawers I've got a bunch of miscellaneous things like HDMI cables, spare Govi light strips, this super long LAN cable, a galaxy light projector I normally bring out on movie nights, remote controllers and some appliance manuals. Moving along, like they say, sound is 50% of the viewing experience. I chose to stay in the Samsung ecosystem with my Samsung HWQ950T soundbar that comes with a subwoofer and two surround speakers and it's been absolutely punching. Have a listen to this. Not all of its faithfuls are always looking forward to sprucing up the setup's design or tech voice. Its neutral and balanced sound profile delivers thumpy and punchy bass that's suitable for a variety of audio content. It also has several sound enhancement features like graphic EQ with additional presets that enable you to tweak its sound. As a high-end soundbar, it comes with Q-Symphony, a feature that comes in tandem with compatible Samsung QLED TVs to create a more immersive audio experience. On the flip side, despite being quite pricey, its chassis is mainly plastic with the top part covered in fabric. I like the idea of the fabric which adds an interesting design element but then again it's the ultimate dust magnet. A metallic grille just like in the other Samsung premium models would have been a lot better. I also find having a display screen on top of the soundbar defeating the purpose as it forces you to stand up to navigate to the different settings. All in all a good soundbar for the ultimate audio experience and the perfect for compatible Samsung TVs. When it comes to gaming, my PS5 has come in clutch and my staples over the last few months have been FIFA, Call of Duty, NBA 2K23 among many others. 
In case you're wondering how far I sit from the TV, I normally sit about 15 feet from the screen either on my Navy L shaped couch or my replica Eames lawn chair, although I prefer the latter since it's way comfier. To the left of the TV, I have an industrial shelving unit that I used to store some of my books, decor pieces and an air freshener. On the bottom shelf, I've got three rattan baskets that I used to store random stuff in my living room. It also houses my Himalayan salt lamp and I added plants to soften the industrial look. For those who don't know, the plant I have on it is called the Devil's Ivy and I have three of them in different placings. More on plants in just a bit. While on the subject of plants, I've got a ton scattered all over my house and they make it the perfect oasis to live in. Starting off with the ones next to the industrial shelf, I've got a Monstera, a giant peace lily, a Zinzi plant and a Chinese money plant. Moving to the other side, I've got a Chinese money plant, peace lily, a fiddle leaf fig, a dumb can plant, a flamingo lily in coconut fiber baskets that add some extra texture to the space. Taking care of them has become one of my favorite pastime activities and I love how they add so much life to the living room. Moving to the sitting area, I've got a navy L-shaped couch with a right-facing chase. On it, I've got this set of pillows with pillow covers I got from Amazon and they blend so well with the entire setup. While I've enjoyed using it the past 11 months, it's not the deepest and the cushions are a bit too hard for my liking. I've been looking to upgrade to one with more depth and more comfy cushions in the new year, so stay tuned for that. In the middle, I've got a walnut coffee table that adds more storage to its drawer, which I use to store away remote controls and things I don't need on the table. Covering the entire seating area is the Austin dark grey shaggy rug which is so soft to the touch and provides the much needed warmth during the winter months. Moving along, to the right I've got two accent chairs. Starting with my favourite of the two, the Eames replica lawn chair. Made from Italian leather and moulded plywood, it adds mid-century vibes to my setup which elevates the overall aesthetic of the space. I enjoy sitting on it when watching movies or when playing video games and boy oh boy, by far the comfiest seat in the house. Complementing that replica Eames lawn chair is the Maya Fall leather armchair from Temple and Webster in a town colorway. When reading books in my living room, this is the perfect chill spot. In between the accent chairs, I have a small coffee table that I use to place my coffee or drink when seated on either of the seats. Moving to the other side of my living area, I've got my kitchen and dining. One of the things I like about my kitchen and dining is the open concept which allows me to watch the TV whilst going about my business in the kitchen. As the popular saying goes, the kitchen is the heartbeat of the home and being a person who's big on health and fitness, I enjoy cooking and having my meals in these spaces. For a very long while, the kitchen and dining looked very plain and to put that into perspective, here's how it looked before and here's how it looked after I did a makeover. I'll start from the kitchen area moving towards the dining. Over here I have my pantry and it's in a bit of a sorry state at the moment but I plan to do a pantry makeover early next year. If that sounds like something you'd enjoy, make sure you subscribe to my design channel so that you don't miss out when I post the video. As you can see I recently got all these storage containers for my snacks, condiments and kitchen supplies. Make sure you also click the notification bell to see how everything will come to life. Moving away from the pantry, to the left I've got my fridge and freezer which I bought off from Facebook market. Getting into the main area of the kitchen, I like the built-in cabinetry which gives me plenty of storage for my cutlery, utensils and some of my kitchen appliances. Speaking of appliances, I've got the Nespresso coffee machine in my little breakfast corner, my gas cooker a few meters ahead and my dishwasher on this compartment underneath the kitchen island. Speaking of the kitchen island, it offers me plenty of space to prepare and also have some of my meals whilst enjoying the comfort of either of my two Eames replica bar stools. Moving towards the dining area, even though I'm not a big drinker, I've got a small liquor collection sitting on my buffet and every now and again I like to enjoy a small glass of whiskey or wine when I have friends around or just by myself. Moving to the dining table, even though I live by myself, I've got a fairly sized dining table which can accommodate up to 6 people and that comes in handy when I have friends around. If you'd like to see a step-by-step -step process of the entire transformation, I'll leave a link of the video in the description box. When it comes to lighting, I've got a myriad of options from the different sources, starting with a huge glass door to the left that lets in lots of natural light during the day. And speaking of natural light, I get more of it from the skylights on both the kitchen and living area ceilings. 
when darkness falls, my artificial lights kick in. Starting with the erasers lights that illuminate every corner of my living area and kitchen and dining. Every now and then I turn on the pendant lights over the kitchen island just to add a bit of a spectacle. To set the perfect ambience on movie nights, my smart lights kick in. Being such a sucker for the Gobi ecosystem, I've got a light strip behind my TV and TV cabinet and a bulb on both my cabinet and straight floor lamps. Control is super easy, I can either use the Gobi app or Amazon Alexa through app or voice control. Shifting away from my living and kitchen area, next in line we have the hallway. As you can see, it's quite plain, but I'll be looking to add some storage, decorations and a few picture frames sometime next year. That in itself is another video for my design channel, Value Space Design. So if you like watching amazing transformations, head over there and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, moving to where all the magic happens, the next stop is my bedroom. At the moment, it looks pretty basic since a lot of the initial focus was on my living room and home office, but rolling into the new year, I'm going to be doing a bedroom makeover which will be on both channels. You see how I care about bringing you guys amazing content? You should be pressing that subscribe button because YouTube tells me 98% of you guys are not subscribed. Can you imagine? 98! Anyway, back to the video. Over here, I've got my bed opposite my bedroom TV, the Samsung Q60B, which is on a cheap TV stand I bought from Amazon. If you'd like a deep dive into its specs and all that jazz, I'll leave a link of the review in the description box. Just to give you guys a sneak peek of the changes that are coming, I plan to mount the TV on the wall, then add a floating media console underneath. To the right of the TV, I'll add an armchair just to add a spot where I can chill out when I decide to read a book in my bedroom. I'll also be looking to add a few abstract paintings above the headboard, then add plants on either side and of course change the ugly looking light fixture. One thing I like about this bedroom, it's all in suite and no more long walks in the middle of the night trying to figure out where the toilet is. I won't be getting into too much detail about the shower and toilet since I like it the way it is and don't see myself making any significant changes in the foreseeable future. Next to the bathroom is my walk-in closet and there isn't much going on here, just a bunch of my clothes and the shoes I wear the most. Moving to the other side of the hallway, I've got the guest bathroom, toilet and laundry and there's also nothing much going on here, although I plan to add some smart tech in the laundry sometime next year. Moving further down the hallway, I've got the guest bedroom which until recently used to be an extra storage room. I've still got most of the items planned for the different makeovers stored in here and my old super ultra wide. Initially when my friends visited and stayed till late, they had no place to sleep so I got a mattress and put it on the floor as a temporary solution but I eventually planned to spruce the bedroom up. I'm pretty sure you guys are saying I've got my workout already which I find is a really good thing since that means more content for you. Moving on to the heartbeat of this channel, next in line is my home office which also acts as my YouTube studio. Even though it looks pretty good at the moment, this hasn't always been the case and just like my living room, it's gone through a few iterations already and being the creative I am, there's definitely a few more iterations to come. Here's the transformation in a few seconds. Starting from the IKEA floating shelf moving inwards, as you all know storage is super important in a home office and this IKEA shelf comes in clutch as it not only stores items in my home office but also puts some of my favorite items on display. Up next I've got a bunch of plants on this garden rail which I spray painted black to match the theme I was going for. I'm sure by now you've noticed a lot of plants in my house and just a quick tip here, adding plants brings any space to life, thank me later. Jumping back on the storage train, next to the plants on the curtain rail, I've got this industrial shelving unit which hosts my printer, gimbal, watchbox, a few more plants and a bunch of other miscellaneous office items. Moving along, next to the industrial shelf, I've got a pair of floating shelves which host some of my collectibles that include vintage cameras, a disassembled iPhone 5 from Grid Studios and the camera I usually use to shoot some of my videos, the Canon M50. Moving further across, I've got a pegboard with pegboard beans and I use them to store miscellaneous office stuff like screws, tripod mounts, among many other things. Underneath the pegboard, I've got floating shelves from IKEA that host some of my rugby accolades. Moving to the engine of the home office, over the last 10 months or so, I've made a few upgrades and there's definitely more exciting ones to come in the new year, so stay tuned for that. At the heart of my desk setup is the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9 and it's been an absolute productivity driver. If you'd like a deep dive into it, I'll leave a link of the review in the description box. 
When it comes to my desk accessories, I've covered most of them in different videos across the channel, but by far the standard piece is my steampunk mechanical keyboard and mouse. One word that best sums it up, class. To wrap up the desk setup, my replica Eames chair perfectly ties in with the mid-century theme I went for. That sums up my house tour. If you've got to this point of the video, I want to say thank you so much and let me know your favorite item in the comment section. People of the internet, I'm signing out. But before that, wishing you a happy new year and see you in the next one.